What is up guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. My goal is to make the fastest Stellaria XXX ever documented. I've seen a couple 72 volt setups, but never a 74. So that is exactly what we're doing. I've already got the nuclear P24F controller upgrade installed, which is needed to support a higher voltage battery. If you want to learn more information about that, make sure you check out my last couple of videos, but let's go see what's in these packages from Charge Cycle Works. This is the new 74 volt, 44 amp hour high output battery by Ewatt. It came with its own cover, so I'm assuming it does not fit in the factory casing since it does seem larger than the factory one. It also came with its own discharge cable. So I'm assuming the factory plug will not clip onto this. Let's go see what's in the smaller box. And then this is the new 84 volt charger, which looks pretty similar to the original one. It still has the heat sink and fan on top. But what's interesting is it came with this, what looks like a wall mount. I'm gonna start off by removing the skid plate and then putting the Talaria on the bike stand, removing the battery, and then we're gonna unplug the controller, swap out the discharge cable, install the new cover, and then this thing should slide in. So this is the cover that we have to replace with this new one. I guess the new battery just sits ever so slightly taller than the original battery. And then this is the discharge cable that we have to swap out for the new one. Should be a pretty straightforward swap. It's just one four millimeter Allen bolt per side. Here are the four plugs on the discharge cable that are gonna hook up on the battery side. These two are for the positive and ground on the controller, which are right here on the nuclear. This is gonna be for the charge port. And then this is gonna hook up to this black connector here. And then on the battery side, we've got the QS8 connector which is gonna hook up at the very top of the battery. And then this other connector that just screws right into this one. Just taking the cover off for the battery terminals. What's funny is I wasn't expecting to do this so quickly. I just installed this controller. I wasn't expecting the battery to ship so quickly. I figured it was like on a two month back order, but I guess not. And I am not complaining. After you have the battery cables unplugged from the controller, now I'm going to disconnect the big black connector. And just so there's no confusion, it's the black connector with a matching orange sleeve that goes to the big plug on the back. And now I'm going to unscrew the connector to the charge port. And we're going to pull everything on this harness towards the back. Just like that. For the new harness, I'm actually gonna try to feed it from the front. Only the QS8 and this connector need to slide to the back towards the battery. Everything else stays in this area. I'm gonna put a temporary zip tie on the smaller cable to make it easier to feed it through. And then we're gonna clip this off. Once you get the plug through the back side, you're gonna notice this bendable plastic bracket here. Just loop that up and press it against the cable to hold it up away from the motor. And here's a closer view at the charge port connector. 
we're gonna hook that up first. It's gonna hook up to this one. They just screw into each other. And then we're gonna hook up this black connector to this one. And then we're gonna bolt the terminals back on to the nuclear controller and pop the covers back on. I'm gonna remove these covers since they never fit under the nuclear cover. One gripe I have with the nuclear controller and how it installs is, I wish they didn't have the cables facing outward like this. So when you slide it in, it just bangs up against the frame bracket right here. Uh, I wish they had it pointing down. It would have been a lot more sleek so you don't put so much strain on the battery cables. Carefully tuck everything back into place. Almost forgot to put the cover back on. This is exactly what I was talking about. This brace gets in the way with the battery cables when you try to bolt it into place. As you see, I have to shove it up another inch and that just puts a lot of strain on the top battery cables. So I took the harness back off and here's the solution I decided to go with. I put the negative and positive battery terminals in a vise and I bent them at a 90 degree angle to buy more slack for the harness. And here's what that looks like installed. You just can't run this little plastic cover on the controller, but it changes the angle that the harness points at when the controller is mounted on the bike. So it sweeps straight back rather than pointing up and sweeping back down. Before we fully install the horn cover and the skid plate, I'm gonna slide the battery into place and hook up the connectors from the backside just to make sure that I have enough slack, put the cover on, and then we'll wrap up the front end. But before we slide the new battery in, let's get a side-by-side -side comparison on weight differences. So the factory battery is exactly 30 pounds. Let's see what the 74 volt battery weighs. It is 38.8 pounds, so it is 8.8 .8 pounds heavier, but it has a much higher battery capacity. I'm gonna let the bike charge for a couple hours since I wanna make sure that the battery is fully charged before we start messing with the settings and make sure that the bike works correctly before we start putting the covers back on. So I've had the bike charging for five hours now and we are at 83.8 .8 volts. So it's pretty much fully charged. Just wanna show you guys what I changed so far with the settings. Though do not copy this. I'm just sharing what I've done so far as an experiment. I have not tested this. So since we changed the battery, obviously we have to change some settings on the controller and change the supply max to 85 volts. Discharge max is set to 350. I tried changing this to 400 to match the battery, but it will not save. So just to show you guys, all right, 400, save settings. Go back to battery and it keeps saving to 350. Cell count should be changed to 20S. Yep, 
Yeah, no matter what changes I make, it keeps going back to a discharge max of 350 amps. So that's all the controller would let me do. And then as far as changes in the different modes, on mode one, I have it set to 100 amps. Mode two is set to 250 amps and mode three is set to 350 amps. Let's go turn this thing on and see if it works. That is a lot of torque. And this is what I have the throttle set to is speed and torque. Start with mode one. Have it set to max out at 27 miles an hour. Mode two. 48 and then mode three is 60. Let's go put the covers back on and take this thing out, see how fast it actually goes. I haven't even gone 100 feet yet and you can clearly tell that there's a lot more power in this. So I got the Psych Plus GPS based speedometer hooked up on the handlebar so we can test out the top speed. Just to give you a heads up, it does read a little bit delayed. It's like a second and a half delayed from this one. I just think that this is like one or two miles an hour off. So we're going to test out the speed with this Speedo. Unfortunately, there was a car in front of us, but let's give it a go. Holy shit, I'm not even gonna lie, my butt puckered a little bit. That's the first time that I've had the front and rear brake lock up at the same time. I was not looking at that red light. I was too busy trying to get 61 miles an hour. Looks like the official new top speed is 57.9 miles an hour on the GPS, but it reads 61 on the Speedo. All right guys, well the Talaria now officially goes 58 miles an hour, but things don't end here because I wanna make sure I have the fastest XXX out there. So I'm gonna continue messing with the settings and maybe play with the gearing, swap out the rear sprocket, and make sure I get nothing less than 62 miles an hour. So make sure you stay tuned if you wanna keep up with this project. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with any of my projects, such as my Yamahas, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.